Namaskar. When we think of evolution, we normally think in terms of a progression from lower life forms to higher life forms, from lower species to higher species. But in the case of a human being, is it possible that they can go backward in evolution? And if so, how could we guard against such an unpleasant possibility? In near-death experiences, the experiencer invariably sees a movie playing out containing all the events of this life they've lived. And this in Sanskrit is called Sankara Darshan, the Darshan or the, the view of whatever we've, we've done, the actions, the reactions that they've caused and so on. And you know, when we see a movie, normally we certain feelings come as a result of those images. And that's what happens at the time of death also. At the time when the life force is leaving the body, we might feel some regret, or we might realize we are very, very attached to a person or a place, or we did things that we really are not happy about. <laughs> we like to change it and so on. So these become the seeds for our next birth. But in the case of a spiritually minded person, their, the thoughts in their mind at the time of death center around their meditation, the mantra they've been using to connect to infinite consciousness. And so although the, that movie reel is rewinding, the last moment, certainly, the thought will come of their mantra that, that connects them to infinite consciousness. And so they attain what yogis call liberation or mukti. Liberation from this endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. And so they evolve into a higher life form, and they're able to access subtler realms, psychic and spiritual realms, which are not available in their present evolutionary state. In the case of a non-spiritual person, of course, they will leave with these unquenched desires, and that those will be the seeds that will cause them to be reborn again in a human body. But what about those that have devoted their whole life to harming and cheating others? What would happen to them? Well, according to that law of cause and effect, they would have to undergo those reactions equivalent to the, the suffering or the harm they've caused to others by those actions. And so they may regress to animal, to plant, even inanimate object. So in one way, it's a bit heartening to know that the worst criminals in history or, or those that have really, really hurt us or our close, close loved ones will have to serve the reactions of those actions in the next life. And so my master used to say, there's no injustice in the court of God. But according to that, to the law, you know, of the, that all, all beings emerge from infinite consciousness in a never-ending cycle and return to that, even those so-called bad people will get another chance, a second chance to attain a human frame and to continue that onward evolution towards higher and higher life forms. And my master has encapsulated the way to achieve liberation with the supreme command. And basically, there are three, three points of this directive, which are, number one, to do the consciousness-based meditation, connecting ourselves every, every day, at least twice a day, to that infinite consciousness. And if we're meditating twice a day, we recommend in the channel, 20 minutes morning, 20 minutes in the evening. After 20 years, that's 4,867 hours of meditation backed into the final moment of, of our life. So it's very logical that we will the mantra, the thought and idea of the mantra will arise in our mind and we attain that state of liberation. And the second is to follow the moral principles, the yamas and yamas, the 10 principles which we teach in our channel. And third is to bring others to the righteous path. So the, the advices are quite straightforward and we would be, uh, would be ad 
wise to follow these, these very solid and reasonable advices and their consequent good outcome and attain that state of liberation which, for which we've been coming and going so many lifetimes before. Thank you. Namaskar.